Hello, it's time for Friends and Neighbors again. I'm Sherry Tatum, I'll be your co-host along with my beautiful, fantastic, wonderful friend, Joanna Ward. Hello. And if you like music and you like good Christian music, we've got the guests for you. We, we do not? have the guests, mm -hmm. ATL native mm -hmm. Tony in the house. Tony, he <laughs> is going to tell us how he got into this business. <laughs> well, because Tony, you started out in R&B <laughs> and now you're here with the Lord. Yes. So uh, tell me how, how, what happened? Um. My mom always prayed for us. Um, I love it already. And she used to tell me all the time, uh, prodigal son, you coming home. Yeah. <laughs> and Amen. she was good at saying, whether you blind, crippled, or crazy. Mm. <laughs> blind, crippled, or crazy. We <laughs> bringing you home. And you came home. Um, there, yeah. there were times that I was on stage. I've traveled all over the world. Um, there were times I was on stage performing secular music. But in my heart, there would be a prayer. Mm. And the stronger that got, I couldn't deny what I was put on this earth to do. Yes. God gave me the talent, so I gave it, I'm giving it back to him. Amen, absolutely. Um, and he called us to be disciples, and through my music, you know, I try to preach the good news. Well, how, how, for how long did you know that you were gonna be singing and writing songs? I mean, did, did, were you young? I started, um, I wrote my first song when I was eight. Of course, it was secular. Yeah. <laughs> eight years old? Yeah, eight years old. Um, what was and it? Yeah. It was actually, I did like a, a twist on the Michael Jackson song back then. Was I think it was called Tell Me I'm Not Dreaming. But I wrote my own lyrics, but it was in that melody. Oh, okay. Um, and... I've been writing ever since. Um, Do you have, I have, to date, how many have you written, Tony? I have about, probably about 20 catalogs. Really? Music. No way. That's exhausting. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Well, when you were on that stage hearing that prayer in your heart comes from train up a child, yeah. the way you it have it go when it's all apart from it, and the Lord said, I'll leave that 99 and I'll go find that one. He came and found you, brother. Exactly. Because he didn't mean for that talent to be wasted. Yeah, I was hiding behind bushes and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he over, I, I see you, come on out of there. <laughs> oh, well, okay, so how many, are, are you going to different uh, genres to sing Christian music, like churches or concerts or what? I do, um, I go, to different churches, seeing most of the time I'm invited out. Um, there have been a couple of times that I've been in church and the pastor see me sitting and say, hey, we have Tony here, come up and sing a song. And I would do stuff like that. Okay. Um, but I actually release all of my music. It's on social media. Okay. Um, any digital platform you can find my music. Okay, um, so CDs, any? Can you do that? Do you do that? Yep, CDs also. Okay. Yeah, but for the most part, digital platforms. You oh. know, that's where music has gone now. Spotify? Spotify, like Amazon, iTunes, you name all it. All of that. Yeah, wow. all of that. Well, so you were with your mom, you said, before, and she passed away in 2004. And yes. then in November, you released your first gospel music. And it was called Road to Damascus. Mm. Road to Damascus. Mm. Wow, mm -hmm. Tony. Well, what's in the future? What do you see? More music? More music. Um, and if my music can touch just one, mm. I feel like it's done its job. And yes. Because, as I said before, I'm called to be a disciple. That's what we're all called to do. Amen. Before he ascended into heaven, he said, go out and preach the good news. So that's what my music is about. It was about preaching the good news and inspiring people to be the best person they can be yes. um, with godly standards. Godly standards. Because you said that, that you perform songs that embodies biblical principles. So yes. what, what, do you, what do you mean by that? Um, Meaning uh, the song Overcomer um, that I'll be performing. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about living, loving, breathing as an overcomer. Amen. Um, because he, through Christ, in Christ, that's what we all are. Mm -hmm. We are the righteousness of God. Yeah. And with that righteousness, 
we inherit everything that Jesus, those finished works on the cross, Amen. embody us to inherit through and in Christ. And we become new creatures. Exactly. All that old stuff's gone. Gone away. That old person's gone. Yes. And, but we're going to take a break real quick, and we're going to come back. We're going to hear Tony sing. So you don't want to miss this. We'll be back in a minute, won't we, Joanna? So stay with us here on Friends and Neighbors. Be right back. Welcome back, friends and neighbors. No, Sherry didn't go anywhere. She's just taking a little break because we're getting ready to hear from my homeboy right here from Atlanta who is writing songs with the Principal's God who went to Harper Archer or Archer Harper High School in APS. My brother, Tony Amy, is getting ready to sing Overcomer followed by Why We Praise. Hallelujah. Spoken words and made them something, and placed all power in one name. Erased our shame through His glory, and made it possible for us to rise again. The angels sing when we tell His story. And praise with us when we praise. Worthy is the Lamb, our Father, the one who makes us all hold again. So it's by faith we live, it's by hope we stand. Why? 
mercy carried us to something. The salvation he gave us through grace. Now if we're going through searching for words to pray, realize the prayer is his name and his body. If you came here to worship today, let me hear you call it this name. If you came here to worship today, let me hear you call it this name. If you came here to worship today, let me hear you call it this name. If you came here to worship today, let me hear you call it this name. You say. Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors, and I tell you what, Tony knocked it out of the park, didn't he? He did. I hope you all enjoyed that, because <laughs> it was awesome. It was totally awesome. But, you know, sometimes here on Friends and Neighbors, uh, we get to speak to one another on a one-to-one -one basis, and it's really good because I think out there, you don't know us like we know each other. I, I, I know Joanna, but there's things about Joanna that, inspires I think and you need to know that and we're going to talk about faith I'm going to ask Joanna some questions about her faith and maybe these questions will be when a crisis comes or a heartache and you'll remember the words that Joanna said and it will bolster your faith to get through the time that you're going through so Miss Joanna my precious <laughs> tell me a little bit about how your faith has brought you where you are today well, thank you, Sherry, first of all, for having me. You're such a gracious host and Are hosting you friends You're and family. Are you kidding? You're always welcome here. <laughs> um, <laughs> you giving know us I so love many you. great episodes. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but I, I have to start with the foundation of how my mother taught us faith in our house. Yes. Um, it wasn't taught from church. We went to church, but mm -hmm. my mother used real life moments in our house mm -hmm. to to show us who God really is in His active nature. Amen. in his confirmation to prayers and his um, resolving issues and his interventions and his being provider, protector, Amen. guide us over her seven children. My mother was a strong and bold, confident woman of faith, so it's probably awesome. embedded in my bones. Yeah. Um, so I have to start there. And, and it was demonstrative in my household. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna say all six, all seven of us got it, but 
thank God I did. Yeah. Um, and she literally, uh, and one of the most profound things that I think I can remember as a young person in high school, my sister, Nancy, who's five years older than me, um, she wanted to go to Georgetown mm. University. Yeah. And she had come home and told my mother that the guidance counselor told her that a certain student um, didn't get in Georgetown. Her father was an attorney, so she wouldn't be able to get in. I'm a guidance counselor by trade. That's my, what I got my degree in. And we're not trained to tell people what they can't do. Yeah. We try and we put forth the effort and then we let that be the final say. But she actually told my sister, you're not gonna be able to get in. And I remember my mother, the 16 hour day working nurse, the widowed woman who had left Niagara Falls, New York with her fa last five children, um, with no family, no resources here or anything like that, just her transfer from the VA. Yeah. I remember her looking very starkly at my sister and saying, do you wanna go to Georgetown? And my sister said, yes ma'am, and with kind of a teary response because the, the guidance counselor had already discouraged her because you know it's a guidance counselor, right? But it's not God. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember my mother taking them to a couch like this in her room and kneeling down and saying this, Father God, you promised me. Yeah, yeah, that almost oh, 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 You promised me yes. that you were going to take care of these children. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. You pro yes. and, and, and when you have a relationship with God like that, Mm -hmm. You can go to God like that, and you can expect God to respond the way God responds. Oh, say amen. Amen. You see? And my sister, and I sat and watched from the outside. She didn't say all oh, y'all because it was about my sister at the time. And, and um, when she came, I saw that, and my sister was graduating that same year. The fall of that same year, my sister went to Georgetown, and we took her and dropped her off at Georgetown. <laughs> and I would like to say, oh, yeah, she got there. No, she graduated and went on and got a master's degree. My sister is fluent in French, plays um, a grand piano, and is just still here. And my mother said that at least 50 years ago. Oh, man. Easily. Um, and so it starts there. Mm -hmm. If you want to establish faith, you can't just say, you know, go to church, sit on the pew, which is cool. Like, there's yeah. no problem with that. Yeah. But what are you doing in your home? Because not only did my mother do that, but when I would have issues and things come up, she would say, well, read Psalms 37. Mm. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, evil neither be in, in, envious against the work of okay, iniquity, okay. for they shall shoot me. <laughs> you know, this is the kind yeah. of stuff, this is the way I was trained. Yeah. You know, Nahum to 1 says. the word? To speak she, word. That's what she did. Yeah. My mother, and I, I have to give her credit because it's one thing to get it from somewhere else, but I have to say where I got it from. That's me. I would come to my mother with a problem and she would say the Bible says, and now people think, and I mean you all, that the Bible's antiquated, outdated, and useless, but shame on you if you think yes. that because you are missing out on one of the most powerful instruments What's to in prove God's faithfulness that's on the planet. planet. Absolutely. And she would say, the Bible says. Yes, mm, sounds like my mother. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible I mean, says, and, the Word of God says. And the says. reason that's important is because she's been gone since 2002. And the Bible is still saying what it says. Yes. It's still backing who God is. Mm -hmm. And so if we don't get into those pages of scriptures, we think that's just some religious control manual. If we think it's just another book and not the inspired word of God himself, then we are negligent. And this is why we're confused because we don't know exactly what God said Absolutely. by receipt. Absolutely. And I said, well, mama, I, even when I got ready to go on Survivor, I said, I'm, I'm an adult. I'm like 30 years old. Got a kid that's like seven. And I'm like, mom, do you think God knows? Now, I'm not a student of the Bible like that yet. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in it. I've got some word, but not like her. Yeah. She seasoned and sauted in it and fried and crisp and baked again. You know, she, yeah. you know, she, she, I said, Mama, you know, these people, they keep calling me and they're talking about my faith and they're, they're trying to discourage me. And I said, Mama, do you think God knows that I'm trusting him? And she'd have given, she could have given me her philosophy. Mm -hmm. She'd have given me some theology, some theoretical, politically correct answer. Sure. And, and yeah. it was with her, because this was the day before she died. This was the day before she died. It was August 27th, 2002. They had just called me that Tuesday. She passed away. She said, well, Joanna, Nahum 1-7, I didn't even know a book named Nahum was in the Bible. Mm -hmm. But somehow she had went through life enough and that scripture was embedded in her. So when I asked her the question, it immediately came out. Yeah. She didn't have to go, let me see what it, she said, Nahum 1, 7 says, God is a good God, hallelujah, oh, yeah. and a stronghold oh. in the day of trouble, Amen. and he knows those who trust in him. And at the time, I was Amen. like, oh, that's a good scripture. Yeah. This, this was my response at 30. Let me tell you something. I sit here at 53 years old, and let me tell you, Nahum might have said it, my mother might have repeated it, but I've lived it, and God is a good God, you and he becomes really. a stronghold in the day of trouble, oh. and he knows that you, me, Sherry, mm -hmm. y'all, whoever it is, mm -hmm. when you're trusting 
trusting in him, he is not negligent in that. Absolutely. He said he'd never leave us, nor forsake us. He, he he goes before us, Joanna. Yes, he There's does. There's nowhere you can't go that God's not already there. Absolutely. He's already, and you were in his mind before the foundations of this world, That's and exactly so right. was I. That's exactly and right. God knows us. He said, when I stretch forth my hand, your name's written on the palms of my hand. It he can't nobody talk about a good God. He is the most. He said, I, the Lord God, I am the Lord God, and besides me there, there is, is no other God. I know not one. There is no other none. one. No, he is the Lord. He is it, and he shared it. Oh, Tell us about God. it. Hallelujah. What you, what you, what you know about that good God? Have to get up and do it. Holy Ghost dance here in a minute. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But, you know, it's all about him Believing in Him, trusting in Him, mm -hmm. trust in the Lord. If you can get your trust, mm -hmm. if you can get out of this carnal mind yes. and get into faith, mm -hmm. you'll see doors open. Amen. You'll, you'll see people come into your life Amen. and help you. You'll see blessings. I've seen it, Joanna. Mm -hmm. I've been mm -hmm. through it. I've lived through it. I've seen miracles. I, I mean, I'm talking miracles. Amen. Uh, when my daughter lay dying, you talking about your mama, when that 250 pound tie, a railroad tie fell on her head, she was seven years old, crushed her head. And they said she'd never live, never live through the night. My mother was there in the prayer with me. We were, she was calling out scriptures. Mm. We were on our face before mm. the Lord. And you talking about, we were there a long time in the hospital, but every day God would have a word. Every day Amen. God would have a miracle. Yes. Today she's 52 years old. Mm. She's a teacher and a mother too. They said she'd have to have, you know, she'd always be paralyzed once she lived. And I said, no, she came into this world walking and she'll go out of this Amen. world because she was fearfully created in here Amen. and she can be fearfully and created out here just Amen. as much as in here yes. but it's the word and trust and believe and knowing it in your heart yes, right. that his word is yes and amen. amen his promises are sure and you can count on it amen absolutely amen. 100 Hallelujah. amen i've got a daughter today i don't visit a grave i've got Come a on daughter now. today that's a teacher didn't have to have any kind of uh plastic surgery because this was all open this was all crushed They'd Amazing. moved the cerebellum. Her lung had been popped. She mm. was completely paralyzed. Had mm. thousands of blood clots, one the size of an egg yolk mm. right back here. God healed everything every time because that's who he is. He's a God of miracles. Amen. He's a God that loves us. And Amen. God said, I'll meet you where you Amen. are. Amen. Yes, he but will. But he knows your heart. Amen. And he knows what you believe. I trust him. Amen. I know him. I Amen. know who he I know in whom I have believed. He is God. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. What did Job say? Five. The I know my didn't redeem at least. Yes, <laughs> I tell you what, once you get it, once you know it, once you've lived through it, you think going through the valley, sometimes people say, well, God must not love me or God's not going to move for me. But, but No, you learn in the valley. You do. You will get back up on the mountain and uh -huh. you will have more faith and you'll have more trust and more love because you can look back and see where I was, but he brought me out of Amen. it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, death. Hallelujah. Hey, woo, death. It, it, didn't ha it couldn't come uh -uh. because the word was there. Life. <laughs> Amen. Life is in Amen. the word. God said, I can bring Bring life out of death. That's, that's right. what he did. That's what he and I did. wrote a book about it, uh -huh. and it's been all over the world. You think that's not God? That's that is God. God. I give him the praise, the honor, and the glory for, for my daughter's life yes. that I'm not visiting a grave. Amen. Hallelujah. And I got God. two wonderful grandchildren, and now great grandchildren because God heard me Amen. and saw my faith, Come on and now. he's seen your faith. Mm -hmm. He knows if you have faith or not. Just trust him. Amen. Just trust him. At his word. Take mm -hmm. him at his word. Mm -hmm. Is that not right? That's exactly right. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. So you're supposed to be talking about faith. <laughs> acting but we <laughs> have faith in God. <laughs> Is our time oh, good? <laughs> Look, where did it go? I tell you, when I start on the Lord, y'all just back up because I'm going to go on. I want you to go in. That's why I wanted you to go in. I said, I'm going to put a, lot, a fire starter and Sherry going to lighten up. She's going she gonna to light it up. Hey, you and I might have to preach. But we have, but I have to preach the word, but you know what? We got to go. We can't preach. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed. <laughs>
that you're winning, huh? And I hope you've learned a little bit about faith because that's without faith, God, listen, it's impossible to please it. Amen. I hope you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen. And until then, I'll see you again. Joanne and I both wish you the best. God blessings. Amen. 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 Thank you.